didn't uh, had to download a, another version of the platform here. So give me just a minute and we'll get started. Green and sound should be fine. Markets are moving, so uh, let's dive in. Good to see everybody. Okay, um, so real quick, I uh, don't normally do this, but for a short period of time, maybe uh, maybe a couple weeks uh, or less, um, that workshop over there on the right, the advanced workshop, um, where we go into uh, a lot of detail on supply and demand strategy, some of the rules, things like that, and the opportunity to spend a week um, in our live uh, trading analysis sessions that Jasmine and I do every morning. Um, I'm going to be delivering uh, those. There's one actually this evening, 7 p.m. Eastern. If anybody wants to join, um, we can uh, obviously, uh, there's a link in the chat if you want. So if anybody wants to join, um, I'll be doing about a 90 minute session this evening. It's free. And uh, there you go. All right, yeah, good to see everybody. How's everybody doing? Uh, most likely on Saturday, yes. I'll be doing uh, this evening and Saturday. So that'll be fun. Get, uh, you know, 90 minutes, we can, we can get pretty deep into a lot of this. A lot of people are, a lot of people don't do well at trading. They don't understand why they're not doing well. So that'll be a part of it too. And then of course, strategy rules. And uh, and all that. Anyway, let's dive into the markets. I want to go over one screenshot with you. So if you're watching the markets, you know the equity index markets um, fell a bit uh, from yesterday into today. So I want to go over one screenshot and uh, a little bit of strategy information, and then we'll spend most of our time on the live markets. Okay. So let's do that. Whoops, sorry about that. There we go. All right, this is what I wanted to share with you. Yeah, there's one this evening and then there's one on Saturday. All right, let's take a look. So this is, um, let's take a look at uh, some activity this week. So, a couple days ago, we identified a supply zone here. This is very, very important. This is one of the things that people have the toughest time with. So, uh, and let me ask you, um, what is special about this supply zone right here? What is special about this supply zone? Anyone care to venture a guess in the chat? And if you're looking at it and struggling and say, thinking like there's not really anything that special, I agree. Yes, it is fresh. Sajad, it is fresh. Sam Bragg, yes, uh, there's a nice profit zone with it. Um, oh, I'm sorry, you said supply zone. But uh, yeah, so there's nothing that special about it. What's special about it is more of the opportunity, meaning sitting below this supply zone was a four, five, six, seven hundred point uh, profit zone, meaning a lack of significant demand in here. While you may look at some of these as demand zones, right? Maybe that, maybe that, maybe that. Price has been back to all of them, meaning price revisits those demand zones. Buying and selling goes on. The demand is now gone. Yes, Charles, location. And it's it's not often that we find a decent location supply zone in equity index markets. Okay. Um, so a little bit later, uh, price rallied up to the supply zone. This circle should be over here. But, uh, and then price uh, proceeds to drop. So this is the entry point right here. I don't know why that circle ended up over there, but uh, this would be the entry point. Very low risk against a nice uh, big reward profit zone. And uh, and there you go. But the important thing to understand is the lack of demand down here. Now we're going to go in the live markets and look at this, right? Um, so it's just it's just matching matching all that up. 
All right, let's go into the live markets. And as we do, you know what, before we do, really the, um, you know, the theme of this session is the importance of market timing. And, and we can spend literally a minute on this. Um, why is why is market timing important? Meaning, you know, what does that mean? Right, the, the ability to time the market's turning points with a relatively high degree of accuracy. Why is it important to enter positions as close to the turn in price as possible? And we're going to talk about this more this evening and and how to do it and all that. But um, yep, you minimize risk. What else do you do? There's higher probability and there's one more. If you're minimizing risk, you're also likely doing what? Maximizing reward. Yes. It's the only way to attain the true low risk, high reward and high probability entry point into a trade. Whatever the trade is, whether it's a you know, day trade for income, a swing trade, a uh, longer term position trade or investment, whatever it is, any market stocks, futures, Forex, bonds, you name it, crypto, right? Options, very important options. So that's why we focus on market timing. Now, a lot of people say don't do that and uh, why waste your time doing that, right? You've got uh, major, major, you know, um, people that run banks and financial institutions saying nobody can time the market's turning points. It's a don't waste your time doing that, right? Um, a lot of the professionals say don't don't try to focus on that because it, you just can't do it. But how do they make their money? What are they focused on when they're buying and selling? They're focused on price, and they are very focused on buying low and selling high. So. Um, Everyone else should be also make sense. All right. So again, um, let's dive into the live markets. Okay. So let's focus. Um, we can certainly look at any market you want to. We can look at uh, forex markets. Let's apply the strategy and strategy rules that we've talked about so many times in, in these FX Street sessions. So to time the market's turning points, and again, I'm trying going to try to really stick to the theme of our session. To time the market's turning points, we have to focus on the market's real supply and demand equation. And it's not just for looking. A lot of people say, "Oh, it's you know, it's just unfilled orders and filled orders." Yeah, that's that's part of it, right? But that's not enough. You know, look for the supply demand imbalance because that's where price will turn. And I've said that many times, but but if you really think about it, it's the, the, the key is to it's not that any of that is incorrect. It's all correct. But to find the uh, best possible turning points, that means finding prices levels in markets where supply and demand is most out of balance. The greater the imbalance, the more likely price is to turn. So, for example. Um, and again, I deliver a live uh, trading and analysis session. Uh, Jasmine Hill, uh, does it with me every morning, Monday through Friday. Uh, all of you have an opportunity to do that. We'll talk about that this evening um, to join that session. We go over all the major global markets, including, including the, the uh, Forex markets. And in there, we are focused, uh, this workspace, my point is, is from that session. So we'll go over... Uh, a number of opportunities from that session. One of the markets that came into a demand zone this morning, and I think it's a good one to think about, is this um, this buy here. Okay. So if we take a look, this is the ETF for the S&P. Let's blow the chart up. So you can see where price is at right now. Uh, price gap down right into the demand zone. But we have two or three, actually four, demand zones on top of each other. Okay. Um, every time you get to a lower demand zone, okay, the supply-demand imbalance is likely increasing on the demand side. Right. So, yeah. So this is, you know, this this demand zone 
uh, as we were going through with our members is is likely okay for a bounce. Uh, we do have some bomb markets into supply as well. Uh, for those that don't aren't aware, uh, bonds and equity index markets are inverse to each other at uh, when they both reach key opposing supply demand zones at the same time. Right, so a lot of these demand zones might be hard to see, like this one right here. I see what you're writing in the chat, hard to see, probably because um, there's very little trading in that area, right? Well, think about it. The, uh, you know, less trading at a price level suggests a higher supply and demand imbalance. The reason why price stayed here for such a short period of time is because supply and demand is so out of balance. Make sense? So uh, the reason why price gaps down or up to our supply and demand zones is because when price gaps, it's because you know price is looking for the other side of the market. In other words, if something negative happens or or there's some perception that brings in a lot of sellers, right, or supply, um, price gaps lower because there's not enough demand at the prior day's close or current price to fill all those orders, right? All that supply needs demand on the other side to fill those orders. Well, where's all that demand going to be? At our our supply demand zones, right? We're focused on finding the levels with the greatest imbalance. So that's the that's the S and P. Um, and again, if you have a market that you really want me to look at. You can certainly uh, put that in the chat and uh, no problem. We can take a look at it. Otherwise, I have plenty of markets that I am prepared to go through. The Euro, absolutely. So if we're going to look at the Euro. Why don't we look, uh, we can do that. Why don't we look at the dollar first and then we'll, uh, and then we'll go over to the Euro. Okay. Uh, we focus on the dollar and the euro uh, a lot. I mean, always. So um, the euro, after bouncing off, uh, trading higher off our uh, weekly demand zone again, it's really stuck between two uh, two big areas here. Uh, but we recently came up to our four-hour supply zone, and that was after rallying off of our uh, this demand zone here. We may have gone over this demand zone in our last FX street session. I'm not sure. But anyway, we got a nice bounce off that, which pushed the uh, euro lower. And now we're coming back to this area. So we would not take this level again. And uh, the odds of price turning significantly higher from this zone are are uh, are too low for us to, to take uh, another pullback into this zone. The reason is because the first time price came back, it, it went so deep into the zone. Okay. So having said all that, and then um, let's go here for a second. There we go. So there is uh, likely to be a demand zone, 91.95, which is sitting just below this pivot low. Okay. So any demand that was in here is now likely filled with this pullback. So the next move into here is where we'd expect the dollar to turn higher. And if we're expecting the dollar to uh, turn higher, we'd expect uh, the euro to likely hit supply and turn lower. All right. Bryce, didn't uh, get to your, your target? All right, yeah, the, um, yeah we, can look at, we can look at those targets. We can certainly look at those targets. All right, let's go back to, let's go to EC now. Yeah, gold, we'll, we'll definitely look at gold. All right, so there's um, so just like the dollar rallied off uh, that demand, there's the euro declining off of supply. But notice in the euro, we we actually barely um, touched this zone and and dropped. It says uh, one of the things we'll go over tonight is this whole concept of secondary evidence. Ah, your target was above that. Okay, yeah, no, this is a key zone. This uh, so this qualifies for a number of reasons. 
as a qualified supply zone. And again, we would use this uh, zone again. We would expect the euro to turn lower from here. This zone will likely line up with that last dollar demand zone that was right below that pivot low. Remember that one we just looked at? Okay, the demand zone just below the pivot low. Again, is likely to line up with this uh, euro supply zone. So you want to watch for that. That helps. That helps uh, improve the odds, right? Yeah. So and Sam Bragg, you, you want you want to make everything. I mean, everything we do is is extremely rule based. Um, depending on where you know our triggers are with all these markets, um, those are all set well in advance. And then you know once price comes into your trigger trigger areas, we just um, you know take action. And whatever happens happens. We're okay with the risk. We're okay with the reward. We can take a look at the Euro Swiss and then we'll go over to gold. Okay. So let's start with the larger time frame. Uh, real quick, not a don't want to spend much time here. Just want to see what price is coming into. So this market's coming into uh overall it's just been moving sideways for a long time, right? But a nice big range, but we are coming into potentially some larger time frame demand. Uh, there that is again. Okay. Big picture. Uh, so let's go down and look. So even though a little bit lower, looks like this 108.25. So you want to start with current price. Watch, let me just put a horizontal line in this market. Let's do that. Then, okay. So likely to come into a, a little area right here. And then, uh, but sitting just below that, this appears to be a qualified demand zone. Not the upper one, but the lower one. Okay. Uh, sitting right down in here. And then on the supply side, at least in this time frame, you've got two zones sitting on top of each other up here. We actually have, uh, this is the opposite picture of a couple of equity index markets at the moment with demand zones lower. Remember, if you're not sure about uh, all the, uh, you know, the uh, the qualifiers, right? It's all about structure and location. We're gonna go over a little bit of that this evening. And that's what, and that's what a lot of people get uh, wrong is that location. They end up buying, you know, in or around the novice space, fair value. That's probably the number one reason most traders lose money. Uh, but anyway, so we have a little bit of room down to uh, that 108.25 area and quite a bit of room up to the uh, that supply above. Okay. All right, I missed, uh, missed some, some uh, stuff in the chat here. I'll try to get to most of it. All right, Dan, so that um, hopefully that makes sense. And Jatendra, you might want to resend that email because I, I replied to you, but uh, it just keeps coming back to me saying there's a problem. So, or maybe just send it from another email. Um, but I did uh, reply to that that last one. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, let's take a look at gold. So let's go to G. Uh, well, let's look at uh, both. Let's start with GLD, and then we'll move on to the uh, gold futures. So with GLD, it's all about the four hour chart. There it is. So, um, you know, right now I, I wouldn't say that we're in the middle, but um, likely to have some gap demand down at the 167.35 area. Qualified demand zone there. 
Remember, both of these zones are gray because they're inside of uh, the range, right? So yellow zones are higher probability than gray zones. So just be aware of that. Not a bad idea to think about reducing position size on gray zones and using uh, then using full position size on yellow zones. Just always make sure you understand the risk and are okay with the risk. On the supply side, we're looking at 173.65. And again, uh, GLD is just sitting sitting right here. I'm uh, sorry, 169.03, yeah. Um, okay, odd that it's not moving at all. Moving over to uh, gold futures, you know, obviously it's going to be the same type of picture. We have a demand zone not far below current price. We've been there already, but price just touched the level and turn, so we would expect another turn if uh, gold does come down to about the 1790 area. You'd want to go just below this pivot low. That puts us into kind of fresh territory inside that zone. On the... Um, Last couple weeks ago, we hit a nice, uh, nice demand zone down there. Let me just make sure. I thought we had another supply zone here, but um, we don't. Okay. So yeah. So between GLD and uh, gold futures, you know, that's uh, that's really what we're looking at there. Okay. Seventeen fifty. Um, oh, that might have been uh, over here, I think. Oh, this one. You're talking about this one, yeah. Anybody still sitting in that one? So you can see price just touched the level and turned. Um, fresh zone qualified. It was a gray zone because it's in the range, but uh, but that one worked out. Uh, that one worked out fine. Um, remember too, you know, uh, later this evening we're going to discuss the concept of fair value, not just to identify it, but um, how it's actually a magnet for price, right? Fair value is is the ultimate magnet for price because that's clearly where the majority of traders agree to buy and sell. So when price uh, comes down to a demand zone like this and you have your recent and relative fair value right up here, uh, that's usually going to be a quick magnet for price. So price, you will usually get right back up here. And then, of course, if there's room to the supply zone above, um, should keep going. But often you're going to hit a demand zone when fair value, like assume, like if this, this sometimes is much higher. So it's nice when, when you buy a demand and your move back to fair value is already offering you say at least three to one, that's fantastic. Just like if you sell short at supply in any market and that move back down to fair value is at least uh, three to one, that's great, right? When you have a nice profit zone just to get back to fair value. All right, let's look at, um, again, I can go to any market you want. Why don't we take a look at some bond markets? Uh, these are key inverse markets to equities when they reach opposing supply demand zones at the same time. So when we look at the 30 year, one of the things that's uh, causing equity, you know, that helps cause equity index markets to stop falling this morning and, and bounce a little bit is the presence of uh, this supply zone in the 30 year lining up against this demand zone here in the S&P. See how that works? Again, it's just, it's not like it's, there's a big rally going on at the moment, but um, it's a stopping point. Yeah, identifying the zones is, is the key uh, to what we do. Let's go back to the 30 year. So on the, that's on the supply side. Right on the demand side. Remember, we looked at uh, this demand zone here, and um, that's after a big rally from the demand zone off the off the 180. Uh, there's a new demand zone here. 
Okay, gray zone because it's in the middle of the supply I just showed you and the demand. This one comes in at 162.18. So if you have some experience and you, you kind of understand this inverse relationship that we often talk about, and by the way, we use that with multiple markets, not just equities and bonds, Forex markets, many futures markets, and so on. Let's say equities start to rally, bonds start to fall from where they're at now. Keep in mind, if you're long equities, um, when the 30 year, for example, gets down to this 162.18, um, if we get a bounce from here, that's likely to cause equities to come, come back down, right? So just be, uh, just be aware of that. Let's go look at another one. Uh, why don't we take a look at, oh, you know what? Not this one. Let's go to a European uh, bond market. This is the 10 year. Also has a demand zone not far below. But let's go to a key European bond market that we look at a lot. FGBL. A lot of people don't look at this market, but it's, it's just so key in helping us with direction in many other markets. So FGBL, after a recent uh, big rally from our demand zone, actually earlier this week, here's the key zone to look at. We have a uh, qualified supply zone sitting just above, one, uh, just above 175. So we're not that far, about 60 cents away. Notice we've already had a pullback to the supply zone right, right over here. And then twice after that price attempted to come back to that level and couldn't. So this is that, you know, what we call that secondary evidence. And that just means that we have more evidence that there's likely to be a significant supply demand imbalance on the supply side in this case uh, at that level, right? So, Again, if this market, like other bond markets, comes into supply and we have some equities into demand zones, uh, that's a high probability event as far as prices turning higher in equities and lower in bonds. Does that make sense? Okay. And again, the dollar is key in, in all of this. But I don't want to, you know, confuse anybody here too much. All right, let's keep going. And again, I, we can look at any market. I'll just keep going through uh, some of the stuff that's kind of relatively uh, close to current price. Let's look at IWM. So if you trade ETFs. So one of the differences now with, so, so we had, you know, a, a, a decent little drop in the, I wouldn't, you know, not a big drop, but we had a drop in the equity index markets overnight into this morning. And, um, you know, they're all bouncing back a little bit now. And we've had this before, right? Probably every, I don't know, 10 days or so, the market stock market comes down to demand and then rallies again. That's kind of how it's been. What makes things a little bit different this time, right? Some of the most dangerous words in trading, this time it's different, but, uh, when we really just focus on what's real and now what we feel, one of the one of the important tenets to what we do, uh, we see that we have a qualified supply zone above current price in a couple equity index markets, IWM, the Russell being one of them. So we see or right up here. If we do get, you know, you're gonna need quite a rally to get there. But right up in the uh, about the 228.50 area, okay, we have some supply. And given that this opportunity is happening inside this, there's good and bad. Uh, the bad first. The the likely, you know, the likelihood that it's it's not you're not likely to have a huge supply demand imbalance here on the supply side, simply because this is inside of the range. Uh, the positive to this is that you might not need one because also because price is inside this range, it's it's going to be very easy for prices to fall from that zone. Does that make sense? So while it's a little bit lower probability on the turning side, it's high probability on price moving through this area, 
not just through this area, but um, should end up, you know, you can very easily end up at the 210 or lower. Okay. If we go over to the, um, let's look at the, let's go over to the Dow, the Dow chart. So we kicked off the session looking at the, you know, the uh, short that we had earlier this week. And that's this one right here. The Dow is one of the weaker equity index markets out there. So it turned lower from our supply zone, fell about 600 points. Uh, but now during that drop, we've left a new footprint of supply. Now this is overnight supply, so this is lower probability, 34,522. Um, looks like the close supply zones are working out fine in the Dow at the moment. But again, this is uh, about one of the weakest equity index markets there is. Okay. Let's go over to the yen. And again, if anybody wants to look at it, if there's another market anybody wants to look at, just put it in the chat. Okay. Wanted to revisit our, our opportunity and range here. So we fell again from the yen 180 minute supply zone. Uh, but be aware that even though there's maybe little pockets of demand in here, like that one, right? Even this is inside this whole range and there's room down to these two demand zones that are sitting on top of each other. Okay. And if and when the yen does get down to this 108.30-ish area, um, we would we would expect a bounce higher, but uh, that rally is likely limited now, not by this supply zone up here, but by this new area of supply in here. Okay. Um, yes, we can certainly go to uh, Bitcoin. Again, the supply demand strategy, we apply it equally. Uh, same rules, same everything to all all markets. All right, let's take a look. So I know we've looked at this one before after turning at our supply zone on the daily, we're falling, but you know, we're right inside this this range right here, right? So what we're looking for is um, prices to come down to the uh, 25,740 area. Some gap demand down here. This is a qualified demand zone where we'd expect prices to turn higher. All right, uh, I see your question in the chat. Yeah, because we're right in the middle of this, nothing close to this is going to be high probability. Right. Again, this is your right inside recent and relative fair value. Clearly, all of this trading activity here tells us that this is where the majority of buyers and sellers agree to buy and sell. That's why we have such, you know, so little trading out here at demand and very little trading out at supply. Okay. Makes sense. All right, let's go on to oil. Uh, yep, we can definitely look at oil. And we can look at USO, which is the ETF for oil. Or we can go to the oil uh, oil futures. Why don't we start with USO? Uh, maybe we'll just end up here. Let's see. Uh, one of the things I want to point out with USO, uh, if we got a chance to look at it, which we are, is um, we're likely to have a little bit of demand in here. Let's go to the. Uh, let me go to a smaller time frame. There we go. Yeah, so the 120 is probably a good chart to look at because you kind of have two little demand zones on top of each other here. This is obviously going to need uh, dollar help to turn in this area. But at the same time, we have some new supply uh, sitting up in here. This might be easier to see with the futures. So let's um, let's move over to, let me move over to the futures and we'll likely see these areas a little bit better. Okay. Um, yeah, let's look at that. Let's look at that on a smaller time frame. 
No, not that one. I know we have more zones to look at. You know, no, it's not it's not clear in CL. It's uh certainly clearer in uh, USO. In the bigger picture though, uh while there's certainly some room to rally, um uh, the high probability rally is likely to happen from below $70 a share, not from above it. Right? If you look in Henry for a uh, more of a swing trade, that would come from these areas down here. In the very big picture, we have to remember we've gone over this level before, but sitting just above 80 is a very qualified supply zone. So um, we would expect prices to turn lower from that area, but we're, we're nowhere near that at the moment. So nice profit zone, but though between that demand we just looked at and this larger time frame supply, very nice profit zone there. All right, let's keep going. Looks like uh, equities are stuck here at the moment, but again, um, with um, now, yes, we have a little bit of demand in the S&P, but when it comes to the NASDAQ, the demand zones are not that close. So, uh, yeah, we'll go to we'll go to the yen again next. Let's just get our triggers in the NASDAQ. So, the on the 30 minute chart, some likely demand around the 14,396 area, but we're not uh, we're not really that close to that. When we look at the day session chart of the NASDAQ futures, and we'll go to the queues next. We see we're um, pretty far. Let's see. Yeah, we're pretty far from our. If you want to get to the gap demand zones that are below these ranges, you really have to focus on down here. Now we're getting rally from this gap, but uh, you know, but the um, you know we'll look we'll look for a, a bigger rally from the the demand zone below. Let's go to the queues real quick, and then we'll go on to the the end. Okay. So again, the NASDAQ has been the strongest equity index market of late. Um, we'll watch for some demand around the 350 area. Okay, that's 350. It goes all the way down to 348.75. And then, believe it or not, on the supply side, um, we'll look at the, uh, I'm sorry, three, about 360 and a half up in here, but we've got quite a ways to go to get back there. Sam, that's going to be uh, location with regard to your key supply and demand zones. But uh, let me try to keep, I'll try to keep up with the chat. And yes, we can look at the, the uh, dollar yen. Okay. And um, you may be looking at or thinking of a specific um, position on the supply side. You know, you have some great supply zones here, but they're all, uh, you know, prices touched all of them. On the demand side, uh, we really actually we already thought we already looked at this, but let's take a look here. Yeah, on the demand side, let me go to this chart right here. This workspace. Uh, the FX markets are not updated, so but that's okay. Let's uh, let's take a look. So here's current price. You may be looking at that, right, or this area. We would not call this a qualified demand zone. Um, that would never qualify as a, a demand zone here, because price, you know, price goes down and then up, right? There's no um, there's no basing here. Okay. Uh, Jack, in this platform, I do not have the uh, nifty, a feed to the nifty on it, but we can always um, try that in time. We can we can grab some other charts, not a problem. Okay, let's go over here. Um, let me take one more quick look at 
Oh, I don't believe we went over the third. Did we go over the third? I know someone was asking for the third year. I think we, we glanced at it, but we didn't uh, spend time at it. So the third year is a, is a very key market. Let's just make sure we're all set on our triggers here. So this one as well is, yeah, it's coming into some supply here, just like that five-year was. Oh, we looked at the third year. Never mind. We went over all the triggers. It's the, uh, we went over FGBL and the five-year. We covered a lot of markets. Okay. Let's take a look. Um, I see you want to look at ETH here, and you're looking at uh, 2300. Let's take a look. So here's the 2300 area. Uh, we'd probably be looking just a touch above this, and you, this, this may be the zone that you're thinking of. So more like the 2315 area, all the way up to 2330, right? So that supply zone uh, looks like it would qualify. Yep, I think that's what you're. Uh, I think that's what you're looking at. Nice initial profit zone already. Notice price could not it's in. It's fresh. That's a, that's key there. It's uh, certainly fresh. And it uh, that area is also the origin of taking out a lot of that. A lot of that price action right there. So nice initial profit zone with that one. Okay. All right. So um, somehow that that, uh, that our time flew by. But um, for those that um, want more, uh, you know, tonight, this evening, and Saturday, we're going to take a deep dive into the uh, into strategy. So there's the link in the chat. You can always register for the workshop. Um, like I said, for the next week or so, uh, I'll be delivering the advanced workshop. So we'll spend about 90 minutes together. And again, that's uh, this evening and Saturday. And then you also have a, um, yeah, so yeah, so we'll be talking, the, the whole focus is market timing there. And uh, And then you also have a chance to spend a week with us um, in the uh, live trading and invest uh, trading and analysis sessions. All right, so hopefully that was helpful. Always going to be uh, with FX Street, and yeah, we'll see you on the 27th. Lots gonna, a lot is going to happen between now and then. All right.